Uh, just another day, slaughtering the impoverished citizens in a remote part of Europe. So, on this run, I didn't actually go up here, but oh! Oh, it does bro Oh. Oh. I received special training via a secret organization working under the direct control of the president. I was to assume the responsibility of protecting the new president's family. Cornel, why am I the one who always gets the short end of the stick? Yo, who are you really? Come on and tell us. You are a long way from home, cowboy. You have my sympathies. Guess that's a local's way of breaking the ice. Anyway, you know what this is all about. My assignment is to search for the president's missing daughter. What? All by yourself? <laughs> I'm sure you boys didn't just tag along so we could sing Kumbaya together at some Boy Scout bonfire. Then again, maybe you did. <laughs> oh, you crazy American. It's a direct order from the chief himself. I tell you, it's no picnic. I'm counting on you guys. Just up ahead is the village. I'll go and have a look around. Yeah, we'll stay and watch that car. Don't want to get any parking tickets. Right. Parking tickets. Good luck. Jeez. Who are these guys? Did you say something? Anyway, welcome to the original Resident Evil 4. Uh... This game... Forget your makeup or something? Right, I just wanted to show off that these guys had more dialogue than in the remake. Hey, what's the matter? Did you lose your nerve? And I didn't know... I didn't know the other cop had, like, stuff to say for a long time. Not that way, cowboy. Alright, fine. We won't come back the way we came. Please, I'm not a cowboy. I'm a ranch hand. Alright, so in the original version of Resident Evil 4, uh, when you pull out your gun, you are... Leon just kind of plants his feet and you are not moving. You can just aim and that's it. The camera controls are fine. They feel a little dated, but that's not too bad because this game is very tightly designed around the limitations. And in a lot of ways, the game controls basically like every other Resident Evil game before it, except the camera is uh, perpetually behind you now instead of in fixed uh, spots. It is exceptionally playable. Yeah. It's weird going back to it like immediately after the remake, but it doesn't take that long to get used to it again. Uh, excuse me, sir? I was wondering if you might recognize a girl in this photograph. Que carajo estás haciendo aquí? Lárgate, cabrón! Sorry to have bothered you. And here's the actual combat, uh, you shoot at guys, if they fall over, you can just run up to them and knife them. The knife has infinite durability here, so don't worry about breaking it. Um, 
Um, just skipping a bit, of, a little bit ahead. That's roughly. I think that window's on the opposite side of the house where Leon jumps out of in the remake. Um, but if we do come up, go a little bit past here-ish, they just stop. <laughs> That's great. I had no idea that could happen. They will like continue pursuing you if you walk back up, but there is just an arbitrary threshold where they just give up. <laughs> nice cut. <laughs> And uh, just up ahead from the house is uh, this guy, who we can rescue. That dog is from another Capcom game. I don't remember the name of it. Was it Haunting Grounds? Yeah, yeah, that was it. His name is Huey. Is it bad I was tempted to say Okami? <laughs> <laughs> was that even out when... No, I don't think that was out when this was, uh, when this came out. Your temptation to name drop Okami just means you have an excellent taste in games. <laughs> I've never played it before. <laughs> you weren't supposed to say that! <laughs> I like that these villagers are just swearing to themselves. <laughs> I mean, don't you do that on, uh, on the daily? Not in Spanish. Fucking hey, I can't. God damn it. You have to shovel this shit. <laughs> oh no, I've been spotted. So which version is this? Because this, this, this uh, looks a lot better than the I did on GameCube. This is the Switch version. It is, uh, the highest resolution console version I own. Oh, there's that. I got hit by a dude with an axe on that roof. Oh, I love that you also accidentally opened the map when you were trying to access the inventory. That's something that happens to me with, like, the uh, the other HD versions. <laughs> I... no, I, I, will, I don't think I'll ever, uh, get it right. <laughs> like, I'm always gonna be fumbling. <laughs> yeah, for those who don't know, the, uh, the attaché case was mapped to Y on GameCube, but it was remapped to Start, uh, on the PS3, Xbox 360 versions. So... Every single person who who played the original and then goes to the uh, to the HD remasters, every single time without fail, will try to open the map every time you try to access the attaché case by accident. Yep. Anyway, if we try to go up the the trail there, uh, Doctor Salvatore shows up, and if we go inside the house where the shotgun was. Why are these people? What are they planning? That Chainsaw. Son of. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, much like the remake, we can uh. We can board up the doors and windows, uh, you know, block the way a little bit. They're gonna, they'll break through eventually. I don't think I show it off, uh, but in the original version of this game, you could actually shoot through the doors and, uh, that, the, like, the little bookshelves or drawers in front of the doors could give you some cover while no one can, no one's able to, like, go through. Sadly, that little detail was not carried over to the remake, but, you know. The enemies are also far less aggressive, because you're not uh, al allowed to move and shoot. Yes, yeah. Although, since you are playing at 60 frames per second, that means that the enemies are actually twice as aggressive as they would be normally in the GameCube version, because AI, uh, AI ticks and decision-making are tied to the frame rate. Oh, shit, I actually didn't know that. Yeah, so playing this game on professional at 60 FPS is a nightmare. Don't do it. <laughs> like, I knew some things were tied to frame rate, uh, one of which we'll get to a little bit later, I think. I didn't realize that uh, went for decision-making, too. Yeah, it, 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 you see it worse with one very specific enemy type we won't be seeing for quite a bit yet. But, yeah, that's that's why the HD versions seem harder. Because they kind of are. 
I, I love it when games arbitrarily tie things to the frame rate. Yeah, um, like the PC port of Deadly Premonition says hello. <laughs> yeah. There's a, a game that gets overly named dropped, like everywhere. If you try to slide down a ladder, you end up clipping through the floor at the bottom. <laughs> Speaking of big ladders, let's go up the clock tower this time. But the floor just broke. Like, the wait. Hmm. Is this it's, game gonna go okay. the Final Fantasy VII remake route? Hmm. Where it turns out it's actually a sequel. You can mm. bleep that out if you think it's spoilery. <laughs> wow, that Molotov just kind of floated up and. <laughs> Yeah, they got a lot of Molotovs. And, uh, I... I did just kind of wait it out. Oh, la campana. Es hora de rezar. Tenemos que irnos. Lord Sattler. Where's everyone going? Bingo? The fact that they were considering dropping that line in the remake just baffles me. Oh wow, it's like I put my glasses back on or something. <laughs> yeah, after we, we, we found our way back to uh, the present. Uh, if you do not go into this house, uh, during the village sequence, that dude will still pop out, and uh, I got the op the rare opportunity to show off a suplex in the village. So fuck it up, we're we're doing a suplex. Yeah, I do I'm, love that they made suplexes accessible early. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. So many great touches to this remake. Yeah, I think the only real criteria to do a suplex in the remake is uh, enemy has to be like on their knees and you have to be behind them? Yep. And there is one enemy type later that will actually spin around 180 degrees to make it more <laughs> likely that you will suplex them. Yes. Because that's how it was in the original. <laughs> <laughs> we will be seeing a lot of suplexes later in the game because of that. I'm eagerly awaiting the DLC where you could do Zangief's power drive. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to become the the. Oh no, I forgot what he calls himself. The the Russian cyclone. Help! Why am I forgetting the important things about my favorite Street Fighter? <laughs> <laughs> oh Christ! It'll come to me. All right. Well, I think I've picked the uh, village clean as best I could. So, let's move on. So this is the end of the LP, right? Because you're only doing the demo. Uh, the LP would have ended yeah. in video one if we were just doing the demo. <laughs> I mean, I guess gonna... we could do video two of Mad Chainsaw Mode. Now we're running overtime already. No, that's at the end of the game. I like this new arrangement of the save room theme. It is quite nice. In the uh, the original game, there was a puzzle there, but it's been moved. I'm also just gonna take it a little slow. There are enemies here, and uh... I don't have a knife right now, so no stealth kills. Go. Well done. That was very stealthy. <laughs> I tried real hard to shoot in their head, shoot her in the head, but I got her elbow. Yeah, she's not going to be able to shuffle hay around, like, 
Like, she's done. You, you've ruined her livelihood. <laughs> eh, she'll be fine. I never thought to attack the animals in uh in this game. I don't actually know what happens if you attempt to kill them. Well, that's because you're not a sociopath. <laughs> I don't know. Village like kind of encourages you to do it because you can get meat. Anyway, here's a here's a puzzle that's kind of. Combine that kind of combines two puzzles from the original game. There's a similarly a windmill that's got something for you to shoot that uh you gotta time your shots. But if you time it incorrectly, this pearl pendant's gonna fall into the, the gross water and uh it will no longer be as valuable. Leon forgot to bring his uh his cloth item with him in the box so that he could combine it with the treasure and wipe it off. Yeah, you can't rinse it off either. It's just permanently grody. Yep. I mean, you can rinse it. You can like wipe it down, but like the smell will still remain. Um, what I shot at up there was a blue medallion. Uh, we'll pick up the this game. The remake of Resident Evil 4 recontextualizes some things from the original game and turns them into little mini side quests. So if we find these blue request notes, we can just... It's got little activities for us to do. This one is destroy five blue medallions here in this, uh, at the barn. And we'll get a reward for doing so. It's thanks to Resident Evil 4 that I know what a spinel is, and also that it's the birthstone for August, I believe. Mmm, I, I was actually able to win. That. I was able to win a round of bar trivia. Thanks to Resident Evil 4 and knowing what that birthstone is. Nice! Uh. But yeah, in the original game, spinels were, uh, they were just more, you know, treasures you can sell. In this game, they are their own currency. Um, we'll, we'll get to, we'll get to that next video, I think, when all that actually matters. But, yeah, spindles are slightly different in uh, the remake. I also, also, I vaguely remember in my first playthrough trying to find the blue medallion in here and uh, just kind of firing at the medallion when I found it from within the barn. Be careful when you shoot your guns near the cows. You might agitate them and they don't take too kindly to that. You could also do the same thing in the original, kind of, if you either shot near a cow or tried to knife it. Uh, it, it would, you know, smack its or uh, it would try to headbutt you, and it would do a reasonable amount of damage. But if I remember correctly, you can't actually die. There is no death by cow. That's... reassuring? I think? Oh, we're... Where did she come from? I don't know. Given how much noise you were making, I, I think she just came in from like three villages away. She must have, yeah. It, uh, it always takes me an embarrassing amount of time to remember to where this door is. <laughs> anyway, here's a, here's a tripwire. If we sneak up very carefully to it, we can just disable it. I can't believe this game is taking ideas from whoever designed the evil within. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. Oh, he didn't go for the red. He didn't go for the red, yellow, green. That that hurts my soul. Yeah, it hurt my soul too when I re re realized that there was a red and green in there. You also keep pressing the coward button. <laughs> Oh, you mean the auto sort? The incredibly convenient thing that's one of the best changes about this remake? <laughs> the coward button. <laughs> I am a proud coward, I will have you know. I I press that coward button with glee every time I open up the attache case. Honestly, same. 
I, I, we'll, we'll see my, pl more, plenty more of my actual uh, inventory Tetris skills when we, whenever we cut to the original game. But I do appreciate that this lets me save like minutes of my recordings of just, you know, f uh, sorting through the inventory. As someone who also fast forwards through a lot of downtime in his own LPs, yeah, I, I definitely sympathize with you there. <laughs> anyway, here's our introduction to combinable treasures. We can combine certain treasures with uh, gemstones we pick up and uh, increase the value on everything involved. And here's a handy chart of the bonuses you can get. It seems strange that you would uh, increase the value of such a collectible by altering it. I feel like this whole mechanic is just some sort of commentary on the arbitrary value of uh, antique and collectible speculation. Hmm. Anyway. Uh, we did. We didn't get a chance to comment on it, but we need that wooden cog to go get the gate open. So we go in here to get to collect that. And oh hey, is this is a big burly dude with a a bull mask? What what are these things called? Do they have names? Uh, uh, I believe that's Piggy from Manhunt, actually, the first one. <laughs> yeah, so Piggy's uh. I think he would be a big threat with his giant sledgehammer, but we have the high ground. But it's not quite over. And yes, for for those wondering, this is also a uh, a beloved tactic from the original. Although, for for those smaller enemies, you would want to use a knife. Okay, there we go. It, it seems like every time you knocked him down, he would just get back up again. Okay, I was so worried that you weren't ever going to keep him down. Talk to me about that strange <laughs> green reticle that came up, because that's not something I've seen before, and I've played through this game a few times. Uh, I just like changing the reticle colors whenever I play these games, just because. I didn't know you could change the color for the aiming reticle for grenades. That's very interesting. I, it might be the same color as the laser pointer. Anyway, we're gonna cut to a different take real quick just so I can uh, demonstrate something. Um, shooting this side of the door does nothing, as you can imagine. But if we were to go to the other side and peek through the window... Oh, are you kidding me? Really? I think this is how I opened it on my first run. <laughs> It's really hard to see in the uh, the low quality uh, commentary encode, but you can see the lock and you can shoot it. Oh god, I feel like an idiot now. Thanks, Chaos Arcade. Okay. <laughs> There's a couple doors where you can do that. I wasn't sure if I got it or not here, but uh, I definitely got it on the first shot. Yeah, you're just trying to destroy the doorknob now. <laughs> Fuck that doorknob. I guess. I mean, at least buy it dinner first, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> at some point, I'm just gonna try to try go back around and open the door. Look, I know you have 52 extra pistol bullets. Okay, alright. <laughs> hey, let's not forget the extra round of the chamber. So yeah, we can get the cog early. But... Uh, coming in here does set off, uh, Mr. Piggy. God damn. I don't- I feel like this is- I don't know how much faster this is for speedruns. I- I assume it's, uh, a decent time save, but I don't actually know. I don't think I've ever actually watched a speedrun of the remake. I have, but it's it's been a while. I don't remember. So if you need someone to talk to about speedrunning tactics of the original RE4, I'm much more well informed on that. Yeah, Tem Tem knows the the original game like the back of his hand. All right. Now that we've got our wooden cog, I think we can uh, we can just move on. Once 
I, uh, restock, I guess? Always gotta restock. Uh, the famous yellow spray paint. And painter's tape? Most painter's tape I've used is green. <laughs> Most painter's tape I use is blue, so I could honestly believe that there's yellow. I've seen orange. Oh, so is that how they make green painter's tape? They just combine the yellow and blue ones? Hmm, you might be onto something there. All right. Uh, now that we've opened the gate, we can move on. That this this cog gate puzzle did not exist in the original game. Uh, it is this is the remake adding more Resident Evil esque puzzles. Also, there's a bit here that was cut from the original game where if we just move on. Oh yeah. Here's a boulder that these guys are gonna throw at you. And you gotta mash the, the Y square X button to uh, escape. This is the thing I was talking about earlier that I know for sure is affected by frame rate. This is way yes. harder at 60 frames per second. Yep. Yeah, there's also a bit of speed writing tech where you actually want to wait until the last possible moment to hit that last quick time event. As Leon keeps running forward that whole time. Huh. Oh, that makes sense, actually. Huh. Yeah, I don't know what the last possible moment is, but that makes a lot of sense. I think it's a, about a second, maybe a little longer than that. It might be different timing on the GameCube version, which is what I'm most familiar with. Hmm. There's some fancy ski lift looking things up there that we're not going to use at all in the remake. A mild shame. I guess Just after a... the uh, after the snowmobile level in Resident Evil 6, they were uh, Capcom was reluctant to try and go back to another winter sport themed set piece. <laughs> But, but the Resident Evil 7 and 8 were both Winters based uh, set pieces, Boo. wouldn't you say? <laughs> okay, a third person Winter Sports set piece then. That was the DLC for Village! Ooh, nice knife tech there. I guess that's the stand-in for the boulder. Kinda. I guess, yeah? And there's an extra prompt there as well to backflip out of the way of the dynamite. Yeah, although I don't think I was uh, close enough to get hit by it, so the game didn't give it to me. It knew that you were making contrast between this and the original and wanted to hide its quick time events in order to make its point a bit clearer. <laughs> I have fucked up by uh, knocking those guys off the bridge because uh, there's a broken neck and auto among them. I, I do know that if you go directly to the path on the right, you can uh, run past the entire sequence with uh, the dynamite. It, it's only meant as a trap for first time players, basically. And for completionist less players who want to show everything off. I didn't actually realize that uh, you could skip that. Well, I mean, it still happens. You just don't get the QTE and everything. Right, right. I think I completely forgot about it when I was recording this. Oh, yeah, those bats are invincible. I forgot. Yeah, I was wondering if you could uh, shoot them down for, for some bonus goodies like you could the original. You think guns can harm Draculas? Those are Draculas. <laughs> or Draculas, I mean, if they're made by Mercury Steam. <laughs> I mean, it worked in Harmony of uh, Despair. Well, there was, there was a gun with silver bullets. It was... Oh. You can also shoot the trip mines to, uh, to detonate them. You can do that strategically, too, if there's a Ganado near them. Oh, 
Oh, well, you just you just let that happen. <laughs> I think I was trying to 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 parry, but I by instinct, but I uh the realization that I didn't have a knife uh, caught up to me there. <laughs> oh, now that's what I call frame perfect timing. Yeah, basically. <laughs> You're gonna try to lure an enemy into a bear trap? Oh, oh I would. Okay, you're good. <laughs> I, yeah, no, I don't. I don't think I, I was gonna manage it. Come on, stay down, buddy. Don't need you throwing more dynamite. <laughs> oh, excellent! A wall combo. <laughs> Okay, so I showed off that you can parry uh, thrown like axes. Can you parry dynamite? Yes. You can. Does it? You you like you like cut the fuse mid parry. Oh, that's oh, incredible. Shit. That rules. <laughs> you could also just opt to shoot it in their hands. Well done. <laughs> I didn't know you could parry dynamite though. That that sounds rad as shit. Well, that's further incentive to, to uh, for me to get back into this game because I <laughs> I put like 75, 80 hours into it in a very short period of time and then just got burned out from exhaustion. Maybe this is the <laughs> uh, the prompt that I need to get back into it. <laughs> I seem to recall you can also attempt to parry uh, Molotovs, but that goes less well. That that probably goes about as well as I expected uh, dynamite to go. I really hope there's like a special animation for failing the Molotov parry. <laughs> also, one other strategy you could do uh, for Ganados throwing dynamite at you is to just like shoot them once they've lit the dynamite. Just shoot them until the thing blows up and then they also blow up. Although, strangely, the fuse is a lot longer than if they had just thrown it. Weirdly, yeah. The fuse doesn't actually have a timer, though. It's it's based on whether the enemy starts their throwing animation or not. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, same thing. Same thing in the original as well. There's no timer. It's just it, it, it's like multi phase. It's like multiple phases in a boss fight. Phase one, they light the fuse. Phase two, they throw it. Good to know. Huh. Right. I think that was the last enemy for the area, so I... Th now seems like a good time to just poke around. I noticed you didn't take any damage when you actually got your leg caught in the bear trap. Yeah, I think I mentioned it last video. It has been a while since we recorded episode one, but bear traps do not hurt you in the remake. They, they will hurt you in the original game, though. Well, you also can't die to one. It'll bring your HP to one. That's reassuring, I think. In the same way that some explosions, depending on difficulty and other things, will take near fa will take what should be fatal explosions and instead lower your HP to one. Anyway. There's this clicking noise here, and, uh, that's the sign of those little bobbleheads. Shoot them, and there, there's one per chapter. Shoot it, and shoot them all, and you get a prize at the end of the game. For once, I'm actually gonna, gonna go ahead and do that, because the, uh, the clicking is a pretty good indicator that they're around. I'm sorry, I'm still imagining Leon's, like, death rattle cropping up after stepping into a bear trap. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the most pathetic death. <laughs> hmm. This the place? That was some loud thumping when we, uh, were on, around the side of the house. Wonder what that could be. It's the one teenage Ganado throwing a tantrum in their room. All right, kid, you can you can stop now. Everyone's dead. 
You can do whatever you want. You're not grounded anymore. I killed your parents. <laughs> I mean, in a way, I guess you could say that still grounds the child, but you know. Well, no, it grounds them in reality. That's different, Chaos Arcade. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think it's a grown man trapped in a wardrobe. I know that's oddly specific, but that's what that sounds like to me. Hmm. Now, if this were a Let's Play from, say, 2008 or 2009, this would be the place where you would make a crude joke. But we're in the year of our Lord 2023. We're above such petty humor. In theory. What's that noise? <laughs> oh. It seems to be a dude just kind of wailing on the floor. Well, I mean, I was partially right. A grown man was involved. You know, I can't say you're wrong. I don't think this wardrobe's big enough for a dude to fit in, though. But you know, I am kind of curious what is what that dude was uh, trying to break at, though. So maybe let's go down and ch take a look. That man had a hand axe, and Leon just used his foot. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say, I'm very impressed with, uh, Leon's ability to just break the, uh, the boards there. Not, not break, but loosen, I guess. Wow, Hello. it is way early to come across the wiggly bag. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Seem like you really wanted to talk. How observant, senor. Now, uh, say, uh, you got a smoke? You know, those things will kill you. Oh, well, maybe just untie me then, huh? <clears throat> Joder, not this guy! Who are you? Just stop right there! And that's chapter one. Well, we got the legal upper hand now. <laughs> Every time you finish a chapter, the uh, the game will tell you what challenges you've completed. You and if you see that little medallion up there in the at the center middle of the screen, that tells you if you've got the uh, what is it, the Clockwork Castellian? Clockwork Castellian. Close enough. Yeah, that that you've uh, shot it for the chapter. You can also customize your attaché case. Ah, uh, I see you didn't do the full pre-order and thus only have a few of the useless- one of the useless charms, as opposed to like three of them. 